All right, guys, what's going on? Derek of KidMethod.com. Today, we're doing bid proposal training. Specifically, we're looking at a janitorial services contract today that's going to be out of uh, Pikes Peak, Colorado. This is a base plus four option years. And um, we're going to be putting together a response, like I said. This is service disabled veteran owned small business. That's super important for you to know. Um, and this is due June 29th. Um, it's June 7th at the time I'm recording this. Um, so guys, this is a real live bid. This is service disabled janitorial. So if I have anybody here in the community who is actively bidding, who can provide services in the Colorado area, this doesn't mean you have to live in Colorado. This doesn't mean that your business even has to reside in Colorado. What this means is you have to be able to deliver on and, and manage a contract essentially at Pikes Peak in Colorado to perform these janitorial services. That's what you need to do. So if you are service disabled and uh, you do janitorial or you're capable of doing janitorial, I really have no idea why you would not respond to this because I'm about to show you exactly what you need to do to respond to it. We're gonna tee it up together. And this is kind of a new type of video. I'm gonna experiment with, uh, maybe do a few of these, see how you guys like them. So doing this video, we're gonna be following six steps that I actually teach in GovCon Gold Rush. We go into a heck of a lot more detail in the program um, we've got a lot of uh, templates and things like that. You're just kind of going to get a little bit of a taste of it today, but we're going to follow these six steps um, that I want you to start learning. So first, we're going to read, extract key information from the solicitation documents. We're going to spend a few minutes on that. In my previous videos, you know, I spend a lot of time doing that. Today, we're going to uh, pick up the pace quite a bit because I need to use majority of the time for responding. Next, once we read and extract the key information, we are going to uh, build a skeleton using a template doc that I'm gonna be using to get started with. Next, um, we're gonna look at the pricing requirements, see if there's any pricing tips in there uh, that I can apply to you, and we're gonna get a good understanding of what's required for the pricing. Next, I'm gonna show you how you would fill in the outline, the skeleton that we previously created, and also I'm going to kind of point and walk you through to the government forms that are necessary for you to fill out and complete those properly. Next, after that, we're going to review. So we're gonna compare what we have compared to what the government is asking for us to make sure that is 100%. And then we're going to tee up submission email to contracting. So again, read, outline, pricing tips, response, review, submission. We're gonna do it all in this video. Um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, it is quite a lot and I am gonna be going through it relatively quickly. Um, and if you're doing this on your own, you're just gonna to wanna to make sure you read again and again and again. Um, don't try and do this as quickly as I'm doing it. You know, I've had a little bit of time to look at this ahead of time. So this is what we're gonna be following today. So we're gonna get started with reading. Let's go ahead and highlight that and get into our actual requirement. So I started to already let you know a little bit about what's going on. Service disabled, Pikes Peak. We can see we have a number of attachments here. We're not going to heavily read through all of those today. There was an amendment and I can talk to you about that. Um, Kelly Rima is contracting on that. And I actually did have some correspondence last week with Kelly because guys, I'm actually digging into these for you. I actually have some emails going on with Kelly that I'll fill you on um, at some point throughout uh, this video. So let's look at these documents. So we are reading. So that begins with looking at our documents. We have our solicitation document here. We have our statement of work PWS document here. We have this section D, um, kind of other documents and attachments. Um, not really going to rely on this too heavily for the response portion. You can see they've got a, a map, they've got some deliverables, they've got some discrepancy reports that would be involved um, once the contract gets going, and there is also a wage termination. In the next document, we actually have just the wage termination. So these are you know two separate documents, but it's the same thing. So there is SEA wage service contract here. And then lastly, there is a past performance references list, letting us know right out of the bat, they're gonna want past performance as part of the requirement. Coming back to the solicitation document, this is where we're gonna extract that key information. This is where we're really gonna read and um, we're gonna learn what is required in our proposal response and how the winning bidder is gonna be chosen. That's what I'm most interested in, in kind of reading right now and putting together our response and you know getting the information we need for next step, which is doing our outline and our skeleton. And this is exactly the same process I recommend that you use. So they're kind of giving us some information, um, pricing schedule here. 
They're talking a bit about the pricing schedule that maybe we will read a little bit more later on. But then immediately we're hit with proposal format and submission information. This tells me that this is exactly what I need to know to formulate our response. This is what contracting wants in the proposal bid. So offers must be submitted on company letterhead. All right. Commercial format is encouraged. All offers shall include the following as part of their proposal. So they're going to want your, your name, your DUNS number, your point of contact name, your phone number, and your email address. Well, sweet, guys, because that's super duper easy. We're going to be putting all of that on our first page, our, our cover page, which I'll give you a sneak peek that I do have pulled up. We're going to be using this template for today. So this is a, a template that I'll be adding to. And so all that information I was referring to, it's all going to go, well, most of it will probably go on this uh, first page and then you see we have an opportunity to put the rest of our company information on this uh, second page here So that's a template we're going to be working with um, Again, all you know anybody who's in GovCon Gold Rush gets access to all this stuff and a whole lot more So uh, so that's kind of the first thing they're telling us that they want that's that's super duper easy Next technical package. All right, so in my mind, you know I know there's three things that could be required in a bid proposal response. This is part of your training pricing past performance and technical. Those are three things. They don't ever change. They may not ask for all three. They may ask for one or two, or they may ask for all of them. So whenever I see technical, I'm like, all right, I know there's going to be pricing because of course there's going to be pricing. I know there's going to be technical now because they're saying technical. And then I already saw the past performance form. So I'm already guessing they're going to be asking for all three in this proposal submission. So let's see what's part of this technical package. They want a capability statement or a capability summary. All right, cool. They want a business approach to perform services at the National Cemetery. Business approach. What does that mean? I don't know. Um, in real life, I do know because I talked to Kelly about this. Um, so I will show share with you what the answer was for that um, and kind of take things uh, on a bit of a tangent for a second once we get to that point of doing our skeleton. But they want a business approach. Next, experience of the prime contractor um, relevant to the solicitation. So they want experience, but in addition to experience, they want past performance. So I'm going to create a point of understanding here. The difference between experience and past performance, there is a difference. Um, experience means what work have you done in the past? Past performance means how well have you done on that work? Unfortunately, I believe contracting kind of doesn't understand this or they made another mistake because you can see they're looking for your references here, which is, you know, arguably your experience, you know, the work that you've done in the past. Let me see the work. Let me see the dollar value. Let me see a POC, et cetera, et cetera. To me, this looks a lot like your experience, but contracting is calling it past performance, which we know now is how well we did. You know, did you do very good? Did you do exceptional? Do you have a CPARS rating? Things like that. So there is a difference and I believe that contracting got this kind of wrong, but because they did make this form, you know, we're just going to mentally swap out the titles in our heads so that we're not confused. And we will be, you know, kind of, you know, filling out the form or, or you would have to fill out this form um, to respond to it. And that's one of the boxes we're going to check as part of our response for this. But, you know, again, coming back, they have asked for both. That's all that I want you to know. And I want you to know there is a difference between both. There is the experience the work you've done and past performance, how well you've done on it. You know, um, typically you will just see past performance. They'll just ask for past performance and then you kind of just give them everything. So here's the work and here's how I did on it. You know, so it's kind of both, but you know, they are separating it. Um, and then, so we've got technical, they built in, you know, this past performance within the technical. So kind of interesting because they also have like a business approach, which is going to be like a technical approach in there so it's kind of like a two for one thing um and then pricing pricing shall be submitted using the pikes peak schedule which did i show you guys that yeah so this pikes peak schedule actually is an excel sheet that they gave us i didn't show you this but you can see we have the base year which is actually here it looks like they're putting the title of it on the bottom so it'll be bottom up so base year and then option one two three and then option four so we'll look at more at this during the uh, pricing tips part of our six steps again what are our six steps read outline pricing response review submission we're about halfway done with reading right now so that is really the short amount of information they've given us for this proposal format and submission information 
After that, it goes on to the evaluation process, which is also super important. So I want to read what they have to say here, because this is going to determine, you know, your strategy, what's more important in this, you know, bid proposal response and how the winning bidder is going to be decided. So they're telling us the government intends to award a contract with estimated quantities and prices resulting from the solicitation to the responsible offer, yada, 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 whose offer conforming to the solicitation will be, okay, pay attention now, most advantageous to the government based on past experience and price. So they are less concerned about this technical business approach capability summary. They're more focused on the work you've done in the past and your price. So they're saying for evaluation purposes, Lowest price will be determined by calculating, you know, the total CLINs in that Excel worksheet. The following factors shall be used to evaluate offers on the lowest price basis. So I'm hearing lowest price, lowest price, lowest price. So that doesn't mean that it's going to be whoever has the lowest price wins. It's going to be whoever has the lowest price with, you know, kind of like the best experience or, or good enough experience that again is going to be, um, where is it? Most advantageous to the government right here, most advantageous. That's what that word means. That's why the government uses it. It's not just lowest price only. So they're saying for pricing, the government may use various price analysis techniques, but what they're gonna do is a direct comparison of the prices between each other, you know, all the other, all the different bids that come in. They're also gonna compare the prices to historical prices. You know, what did you pay in the past? What did the government pay in the past? Um, compare prices with what the government thinks it's worth which is called the IGCE or the IGE, which is the internal um, or independent government cost estimate or just internal government estimate. And then lastly, compare prices with prices obtained through market research from other similar contracts like this one. So guys, that's telling you just kind of the process that the government is gonna be using. It doesn't really affect you a whole lot, but it would behoove you to kind of know what the going rate for this uh, janitorial services in this area is. That's really my main point to you here. Next, past performance. Remember, it's price and past performance that they care about. The government may use various analysis techniques, blah, blah, blah. Okay, number one, review PEEPERS, which is your CPARS rating in the past performance information uh, retrieval system or reporting system. Um, so it, when you perform on a contract and you finish, you're gonna get a folder that kind of goes out in cyberspace and the different agencies get to look at it. So um, that is kind of what that is. So they're gonna check and see if you have anything. Um, also contact references from that past performance list and then cemetery staff or contracting officers personal knowledge um, if you've done work on the the premises before you know kind of how did you do on those jobs quite frankly that's not really fair because that's kind of making things up to uh, subjectivity um, to use in something as critical as a proposal evaluation because you can't actually put that in your proposal but we'll save that for another one of Derek's soapboxes at another time. So lastly, the government reserves the right to reject all proposals if doing so is the best interest of the government. All right. So it's kind of a blanket statement saying, you know, they can say, screw you if uh, you're, all the proposals come in bogus, essentially. Um, we don't have to award to anybody. We're not going to be forced to make a bad deal. So that's a solicitation document. We're about rounding out step one for reading because you know I kind of have a really strong idea of what I need to put together my uh, my skeleton, my outline. Um, but you know, here's a statement of work. This is gonna be the specifics of the actual job. And you're gonna need to rely on this a little bit more um, to, do your, uh, to do your pricing. But one thing I wanted to point out before I move off of this first step reading is in the very bottom, I found this um, they have this submittal plan, which is usually documentation, deliverables, milestones throughout the contract. But I found this work plan staffing plan is to be submitted with your proposal. And I was like, isn't that interesting that they didn't include that when they created a section called proposal format and submission information. And then they gave us, you know, everything they want in the technical. That's something that should go in the technical and it was not there. So I actually did email contracting and um, contracting said that this work plan staffing plan actually is the business approach. Ooh, so that's that's tricky, right? I mean, I never would have guessed that. I mean, maybe with all my experience, I could have arrived to that conclusion, but I wouldn't have been 100% confident. And it really upset me because, you know, and I, and I did a big long rant on Friday in our GovCon Gold Rush um, student community about this 
because uh, you know you guys wouldn't know this, and you don't know enough to push back to contracting to say, you know, like you're, you're some there's something missing here. You know, well, what do you want for a business approach that is so vague? So the answer I got, and I'll, I'll show you the email later on. I kind of want to get into this before I start showing you that email and getting sidetracked. But all you need to know is that this work plan staffing plan as revised to be submitted with your proposal actually is this business approach, okay? So that's super important to know for putting things together for us. Next, we have our, uh, you know, this is all the documents, really not too worried about that. We got our wage determination and then our past performance uh, references list. Nothing really to read through. So I would say for now, we are about done reading for what I wanna do in this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and now move on to our next step. We're gonna do our outline, we're gonna create a skeleton and we're going to use that using our template that I kind of have teed up for us here. You can see all this information. This is just kind of, you know, uh, example information that I've used um, in our examples in GovCon Gold Rush. So all this information, you know, will need to be changed. So I'm going to uh, save time and I'm going to change this information right now. And then I'll kind of walk you through the information that I updated. Okay, so just like that, I'm back. And now um, let me show you the information that I updated. This is as part of our skeleton part of step two here. Outline, create a skeleton, remember. I repeat things so it sticks in your head, guys. It's not that I'm forgetting. I just want you to keep understanding the process. So this is our skeleton template document. And I've updated some of the basic information. Solicitation number here, okay? This number right here, notice ID, solicitation number. Title, okay, we got Pikes Peak, Pikes Peak. I got the date on there. I took Kelly's information from down here. Contracting office, Kelly Rima, so that's here. Actually, I need to update this. I forgot to update that. Things happen. Um, I updated this, the number here in the header, solicitation number. Um, this would be your company information. Forgot to update this as well, doing this as quickly as I can, but I'll just update it while I got you here. To, we will say, VA. This is for the VA. And it's VA National Cemetery, or are we just gonna call it the VA? I think we'll just call it, yeah. Well, we can call both, VA National Cemetery. Cemetery, spelling it wrong? All E's in cemetery, apparently. For Pikes Peak Janitorial Services Base Plus for options, all right? So solicitation response from the company to VA National Cemetery for Pikes Peak. So again, a lot of repetition here, guys. Solicitation number, here's the NAICS code. I pulled that from here. So, you know, it's just a little bit of a hunting game. Contracting address again, same as here. Kelly Rima's information. Okay. Then I got a little bit of a cover letter here saying ABC Company, you know, offers its response to solicitation for janitorial services at Pikes Peak. Um, our SAM profile is uh, current uh, with our reps and certs, blah, blah, blah. And our NAICS code 561720 is updated in our SAM profile again. Um, please find our company's response to include our technical package our past performance information and pricing schedule. And remember why I wrote that. I wrote that because um, they're asking for this technical package, they're asking for past performance, and they're talking about pricing. Um, and they do have a pricing schedule, which is this document here that's pretty important. So um, that is really all that I did in that short amount of time. This information doesn't change. Really what I was trying to do is satisfy this stuff right here. So this is really what I was doing. And um, the DUNS number, it's not on the first page. The DUNS number is here, right here. So your DUNS, your cage, this little company summary profile here. Everything else though about your company is probably gonna be on these first couple pages. You got your POC, you got your address, you got all that good stuff that they're asking for, right? So that's this first part of what we need to tee up. So now we have a skeleton. Now we have a, a bit of an outline um, kind of started, but we still need to finish it and round it out so that it is reflective of um, what they're asking for. So this technical package for evaluation. You know, guys, I literally like to copy and paste 
what they're asking for. And then we can, you know, mess with it and make it look pretty uh, after the fact. But this way you don't miss anything. We do have a table of contents that's here that will, um, it's probably going to stay the same for the most part because it's already got technical past performance and pricing in it. And again, that's not just because I'm so smart. Like I said, it's those three elements that you're always going to, you know, possibly be using. Like a painter, you've got your primary colors here. And then it's just like mix and match and make different colors and, you know, every bit is different, right? So uh, this is our technical. So we already have something here called technical approach. So I'm going to go ahead and just plug this in. This is a really good learning exercise for you guys because you go from having nothing, you go from having a blank sheet of paper, then you go to having this bit of a, a starter template, you know, that I offer. And then um, you use that to start plugging in what the government's asking for. And it's like, holy, holy damn, you know, like I, I may have something here, you know, like I may have a little bit of a response at some point. So technical approach, we know that this is what they want. And within that business approach, remember, we even have more, uh, more detail on, on that. They want a work plan, staffing plan. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that we don't forget about that. That's, you know, that's really what we're after with this. Okay, so um, that is that. We've got that part of it. That's a technical package. Pricing shall be submitted using the Pikes Peaks schedule. So um, we know we're going to be referring to this Excel document. Um, I'm not really a big fan of like double working. So I, I don't really want to work this table into my response. So instead for now, and, and you could, I mean, it's, it's really up to you. For now, I'm going to go to our pricing and I'm going to go Please refer to Pike's Peak pricing schedule attached, right? Because um, we know that's going to be attached. And that's going to be all that complete information that contracting was asking for. Um, but then this past performance, we have these two things. So, you know, we did a copy and paste job. So hopefully you were paying attention because um, not all of that actually belongs there because contracting made this, you know, they made it kind of weird for us. So that actually needs to come out and that needs to come down here. So now we have a little bit, uh, you know, more to work with. And what we can do is for this one, we know this is going to be past performance list. So we can again say, please see attached past performance list or please please see past performance list attached. And then experience of the subcontractor relevant, you know, so if you're going to do a little bit of writing, you're going to do it in this bullet point here. So now we know really what we need for a past performance. We've got this form and then a little bit of writing here. We have this technical approach, which is really going to be a capability statement or summary as well as this work plan staffing plan type thing. And then we're going to have our, uh, our pricing, which is going to be, you know, please. And again, you know, what I end up doing this at the end, you know, maybe I would insert the Excel as like an image in here, or, you know, turn it into a PDF and insert that as a attachment and just say, see below so that it's all one nice packet. You know, maybe we do something like that. But for now, we're just kind of like filling out what needs to be where and making sure that we have everything covered and having a, a kind of, you know, a good understanding. You're going to see me go nuts um, trying to keep all this stuff organized. It's going to constantly keep changing as we write stuff. Uh, but, you know, in terms of a skeleton, this is what I really want you to do. I want you to get your template, um, whatever it is you're using. You know, they ask for company letterhead so you can put a logo on it or whatever. Get this information updated and then start to plug in, copy and paste, form the right proper sections, get an idea of what forms you're going to be using to complete your, your skeleton and your outline. Okay, so now next we are on to pricing tips and understanding the pricing requirement. So we've got a few things specifically that we need to look at for this. So the first thing I want to look at is this whole Excel workbook that they gave us. You know, we, we touched on it, but I'll just be a little bit more thorough. 
this is not terribly difficult guys um, but I'm gonna break it down for you so that you understand but you you need to fill this out and you're gonna attach this whether it's in your actual proposal document or it's attached as a separate part in the same email as a separate document it doesn't really matter as long as you're referencing it in the proper pricing section like we did in um, our template that we got going on so pretty good stuff so far so as you know this is base plus four option years what that means is it's going to be the whole first year and they're even giving you the dates which are august 1st through july 31st um, starting this august going through to the end of next july and then after that the next whole year will pick up going through 2023 then 2024 2025 2026 can you believe it over the next five years we'll be into 2026 it's absolutely insane do they have to execute on these option years no they don't if are you doing a good job if you're doing a good job are they going to more than likely um almost absolutely uh, contracting doesn't want to have to go through this process more than they have to so um make sure you do a good job you know develop good relationships maybe use some of the strategies that we teach in govcon gold rush to get more business within this agency within the va again if your service is able to janitorial business this is you know a specific bid that you can literally go and bid on i want to see you in the comments in the video today or whenever you're watching this and let, letting me know that you're going to go after this because this isn't due for a few weeks and i'm walking you through it so you know hopefully hopefully somebody from our community can go after this one and win this it's kind of my hopes for doing these type of videos so anyways bringing it back um that's the that's kind of what the base and the option years mean so we're talking about that we're talking about these columns right these columns right here if it will stop freaking out on me all right so now what about this quantity and unit of measure and these different clins all right so let's talk about that next so we have clin one two and three these are called clins their contract line item numbers uh, i'm pretty sure that's what the clin stands for but it's, it's 0001 that's the clin number just so you know and then 1001 means you're in option year one 2001 means you're in option year two you get it so let's look at the line items this is specifically what you're going to be pricing if you're going to be pricing something you have to know what you're pricing and it's not just like hey give us your commercial quote even though they said commercial whatever is fine you still have to price the actual line items so they break it down and i always say the more line items you get the better because it's going to be more specific and accurate of what you're quoting instead of doing like one just one job just one big job you know give me one number for it you know because that could mean like you miss a whole lot of stuff the more it's broken out the less you're going to miss so number one monthly custodial services we well, would have to refer to the the pws to see specifically what that looks like you know what does that mean but what we do know is it's monthly so they want a monthly custodial service so they want quantity of 12 unit of measure mo means month so what you would do is your unit prices you know if you were going to be charging i don't know let's say uh 2200 per month then your extended price is going to be 2200 um it doesn't look like they have a a built-in equation here but what this would be is it would be equal 2200 times the quantity so it's just the unit price times the quantity you know 12 times 2200 so your extended price for all 12 months for the year is going to be 26,000, for example and then we're going to do something similar for these next two so the uh, clean light item number two is the semi-annual hard floor maintenance so probably going to come in and like clean and wax the floor or something like that so they're giving you two and they're giving you jb which means job so two jobs per year so you know say each time you do it it's going to be i don't know 750 dollars well you know you're going to have that same sort of equation going on um your unit times your quantity will equal your extended price and then it's going to be the same thing for this last line item carpet uh, restorative cleaning so you know maybe that's i don't know maybe that's a little more 900 i have no idea um but it's also for a quantity of two so two times a year so that's 1800 times a year so what this is going to be is it's going to be and usually usually guys these formulas are inputted in here so i'm kind of doing it on the fly here um it's going to be the total of of all of these extended price that's going to be the, your total base year price 29.7 so about thirty thousand dollars again do not do not use this uh ballpark pricing um at all these numbers are totally totally made up 
but just know for this sheet, you're going to do the same thing for option year one, two, three, and four. And then down here, we're going to have to do some sort of formula where you, you know, you add up each of these totals, right? And um, I'm not sure why that formula didn't work, but you kind of, what did I miss here? What am I missing? I'm not sure why it's, it worked on the other one. But anyways, you get the point. What you have to do is you just have to add up these different squares. I'm not gonna see it, it worked here, so I don't know. Um, I'm not the best Excel whiz. I'm I'm average at best with Excel, so probably some fat finger thing that I messed up. But anyways, you get the point, right? So um, that's how you would treat this pricing schedule. It's pretty easy. You just have to give them the numbers that they want um, and fill this out and save it. And I would PDF it when you were done. Um, I wouldn't give them the raw Excel sheet because you don't want something accidentally to get changed on behalf of your company when they're reviewing it. Okay, so we're still looking at pricing tips. So there's uh, really, I guess, at least one more thing I wanna show you really quickly before we move on from this. So for pricing tips, we want to look at this wage termination also. So if something's really important, I kinda gotta show you both of these things at the same time. At the end of the solicitation document here, they have this janitor WG2 um, 1425 plus 454. So they're kind of giving you a equivalent of what they think this should be paid. They can't really tell you what to pay people, what you're to pay your employees that are going to do this. You know, if you're working in another state and you're just hiring a few employees and they're going to do this, um, this is going to help you with your pricing because you kind of got to back in to your price from what are you paying your employees, right? And then, you know, you got to do your markup and do your thing on all that. And then, you know, are there any cleaning supplies required? All that sort of stuff you'd have to read into more. Um, what is the government providing versus what you have to provide? Um, but this is giving us a little bit of a ballpark in terms of, you know, they're kind of going to be some, expecting something similar to this in terms of the, the wage rate just for the base, the base pay of the employee. So we've got $14.25 an hour plus $4.54 French benefits. So let me see why they're doing that. So this is the wage determination that they've given us. So, um... You know, really the way you use the wage determination is these are different occupation codes and it's a matchmaking game. So you want to find a code description that lines up the best with the type of um, service, the type of employee that you are uh, providing for this. And why do you do this? Well, um, really what this is, it's a service contract act. So it is something that you're, you you got to follow. Um, and where this comes into play is if you get audited by the Department of Labor and they look at your contracts, this is a way of saying, hey, are you paying contractors enough? right? Are you paying them under what they should for their job occupation? If so, you're going to have to back pay all that, all that money back. It's not going to be pretty. In addition to that, though, you know, in addition to all these wages, and you know, I guess, let me just see real fast. Is there, you know, so there's janitor, and that's at 1363. So, um, you know, that's maybe something for you to consider. It's close to that 1425 number. Again, they're just kind of throwing you a ballpark. They can't tell you what to pay. But if you're using this occupation code, um, you know, that might not be far off. Um, you've got this laborer grounds maintenance. I mean, that's sort of janitorial and it's sort of not because it's more outside stuff, but it's up to you. But um, that's literally how you use this. I kind of try to do control F to see if anything pulls up that is relevant. Um, and if not, you kind of have to do a, a bit of a manual search. So, you know, janitor pulled up right away. This is a janitorial services contract, so I don't believe anybody's going to fault you for uh, using that occupation code for this. But so just know there's a bunch of codes here that you, this is how you use this document. But next, 454, I'm going to let you in on a little bit of secret. The government isn't just pulling that number out of you know where, this 454. They're pulling it from here. And unless you already know this, unless I was, you know, I'm showing it to you now, you may not know this is here. So health and welfare, 454. You have to pay this in addition to what this number is. So that's why it's 1425 plus 454. You don't pay the employee 1425. They have to be earning this, what is it? 1879 or whatever this works out to. You know, almost $19 an hour for this service is what you have to pay. Plus all of your, you know, employee um, healthcare, payroll costs, you know, FICA few to Suda. All that half taxes that you pay in as a uh, as a business owner in for your employee, you know, you're gonna have to pay into all that stuff too. Um, but you know, the employee doesn't get that. That's not the employee's base pay. 
the employee's base pay is is this number. So, um, and then in addition to that, employees, you know, typically they get two weeks vacation after one year of service. Um, these are all things that you have to abide by and honor as part of a service contract act. Lastly, um, 10 paid holidays as well. So contractors, um, they get uh, they get paid holidays and you don't get to build the government for work that isn't performed. So you, you have to work that out to basically increase your, your wage rate. And honestly, it's going to be the difference between 19, 20 hours and 20, 80 hours. It's going to be these, these different, um, it's going to be the two weeks for the holidays and the two weeks vacation. If you do the math, um, it's going to end up being the difference in those hours. And I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole with you right now. Um, if you want coaching or something to go more into that or talk to your accountant when you're doing your pricing, or maybe you do know what I'm talking about. That's cool. But really, that's that's what you need to know from this wage determination. You got your pay rate. You got your health and welfare. You got your holidays and you got your vacation, whether it's going to be a couple, two weeks, three weeks, whatever. You have to account for all that in your pricing and then you take that pricing in conjunction with your company's profit and all that other stuff and then that's how you arrive at your actual costs here like i said these numbers are totally made up you're gonna have to have actual you know prices you know unit prices uh figured out that are really going to be reflective of what you're paying your employee and your company you know overhead and gna profit on top of that so that's really what i want you to know about pricing Okay, so now the next step is our response, which is filling in our outline as much as we can. Um, if you were doing this, you'd wanna fill it out entirely, obviously, um, as well as any government forms that would be associated. So let's take a look at our solicitation response template and just kind of see you know, what we're working with in terms of what really needs to be filled out now. And we also have to start making some decisions about, you know, are we gonna say, please see attached on these things or are we going to insert these things into the actual document. It is a bit more work to insert those into the document, but I think I'm gonna to try to do that to demonstrate um, to you what this all could look like as one, you know, kind of one pulled together document. So we have our technical uh, package, right? And we're gonna to wanna to start to uh, work on our wording a little bit as well. So instead of, you know, just having the copy and pasted bullet points, we can say, please see uh, ABC companies capability statement below you know just reword things a little bit so that they're not exactly the same and you also have to make a decision decision here do you want to actually have your capability statement or do you want to have a, a, a capability summary maybe something that's like three quarters of a page or something that you already have written so you would want to make this decision here um, the decision I'm making is we'll just insert a uh, actual capability statement below as I've written here and it, you know it'll be involve me adding a PDF to this document so that'll be a little bit tricky but we'll we'll get through that and then the next thing we have here is remember they wanted this business approach also known as the work plan staffing plan for our company to perform these services so I actually do, um, well, first off, I want to I want to reword this since we're rewording things. Um, please find ABC LLC's work plan slash staffing plan to serve as our company's business approach to perform janitorial services at Pikes Peak, you know, Colorado, or something like that. So we'll go ahead and get rid of this. And, you know, at this point in time, you want to have, you know, some sort of thing on hand. Uh, again, you know, GovCon Gold Rush students kind of get access to a lot of this stuff. So here's just kind of a, a sample um, staffing and management plan that you could use. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste that for today. But, you know, Obviously, we're not writing everything from scratch and we could, you know, delete, add to whatever, whatever we needed. Again, this may be too long or too involved, but it, it's something. And as you start to bid on things, you're going to start to acquire these documents and, you know, you're going to be able to kind of plug and chug some of this stuff. That's how real proposal writers and contractors work. Okay, so. We're going to plug that in and I'm not going to do anything to it, but it's a placeholder for now because we have this staff management plan 
that they're they're kind of asking for this working plan staffing plan so uh, that would go there and i'm going to leave that there for now um, so what we need to know is that we need to back in with a capability statement before that so we're going to do that when we get to some of the the documentation management part of this so what else can we start to fill in because again that's what we are doing we are uh, responding filling in the outline and doing the government forms so aside from this technical thing what else we have we have this past performance part that we still have to work on and we have this experience of the prime and then we also have this uh this past performance list that they gave us that we're saying please see attached but although you know i'm probably going to add that as part of the document like i said i'm going to try and use that as our strategy here so it's going to be similar to what we do with the please uh please find abc llc's past performance list completed we'll say list below for completed references relevant to this solicitation for janitorial services you know just kind of keep it keep it simple guys i'm going through this quickly don't uh crucify me here like this is i'm just kind of showing you the motions of what you need to go through obviously you can put a lot more time into this um and i encourage you to, to put into much time as you can for those bids that you think you have a really strong chance at winning okay but so this is what we're going to have as a placeholder here now because we're going to have to fill in with this uh this list now that they've they've given this so let's go ahead and you know i'll kind of show you how to fill this out i'll do one of these for example it's pretty easy so what i like to do is i like to use a software called smallpdf.com they allow you to do uh, like a few of these edits and conversions per day for free otherwise i think it's 108 dollars per year it's a heck of a lot cheaper than like getting the adobe suite or adobe acrobat because with government contracts and solicitations you're going to be dealing with a lot of forms you need some sort of form management type software that's going to help you to edit those and fill them out uh, so i like smallpdf.com so um i already pre-populated you just click add document and it'll it'll uh, bring it up and then you double click on it and it kind of allows you to do things so this is originally a pdf so i can come over here and click this you know uh text icon and it'll allow you to start typing stuff so contract title you know and number so you know this is past performance guys uh you put what you have this does not have to be a government contract you know it could be a commercial contract they're even asking for business name down here for a business that you preferred this you performed this for you know this isn't your business this is the business that's you know you're referencing is past performance so don't freak out too much about that so you know contract title you know we can just say janitorial summer season number you know if you got some sort of unique identifier for your commercial contracts you know go for it and we can say we did this for i don't know say we did this for the, the i don't know the los angeles park system so if you want to adjust this this font you can use this little thing right here um we're kind of going to be stuck with small because that's really all that it lets us do so We'll just roll with small for now at least what we're writing is going to fit on the form you know whatever the address is like i think you guys kind of get the point 1111 hopeville lane like whatever the dollar amount is going to be you know the total value of the contract so for these janitorial summer season uh, services that you performed uh let's say it was like i don't know twenty one thousand for the season your point of contact is going to be, you know, somebody who's going to say something good about your company, hopefully, John Doe. Uh, and then we could say LA Parks Director is his title, you know. I'm, I'm really just going to go through one of these because it's, it's really quite, quite simple, you know, 888-888, right? And then whatever, whatever the... 
whatever the um, information is. So I, I kind of showed you this to show you this next thing that I want to show you. But literally, you know, so now we can we can download this. You would fill this out for all of these. But they do say list any company employees who had experience on the above jobs that are planned to be involved on this contract. Contract list the extent of their involvement, um, and then also describe how and to what extent that your previous experience benefits the requirements of this contract. So you know you've got to do a little bit of writing here. I can't do plug and chug for you uh, for for everything. Um, you know, what you can do is employee number one, employee number one served, performed for the LA parks summer season cleaning job and will be working directly on this contract as proposed. Employee number one has extensive experience in performing janitorial services. And, you know, I, I guess we I kind of skipped over it too quickly, but um, obviously, you know, you have to read all this stuff, guys. I'm not telling you not to. It's just that this video is long and this video is focused on doing a response. So I have to limit the amount of reading that I actually show you. But, um, you know, you have to facility cleaning services, you know, non carpeted floors, carpeted floors, dusting, vertical services, surfaces, uh, windows, glass cleaning, drinking fountains, kitchen break rooms, you know, trash collection. Uh, so all this stuff, restrooms, locker rooms, this is all the work that you're going to be doing, you know, when they asked you in the pricing sheet, you know, per month, you know, this is all the stuff that you have to you have to do. So when you're talking about your employee, you know, what I would do is I would definitely call on, you know, some of those points so that you can demonstrate that your employee is able to do those those requirements that are being asked for in this contract. So then describe how and to what extent your previous experience uh, benefits the requirements of this contract. You know, so it can be like this con the work performed on previous contracts is extremely similar to the requirements in this contract solicitation and then you know just you got to be a little bit creative here I mean you got to be able to think on your feet a little bit and you know hey if, if you're if you kind of checked out like seven minutes ago because you're like I don't have past performance Derek well let me put it this way have you done anything as a small business owner or any people in your company because I always say you can use personal past performance or commercial past performance if you don't have government past performance. So, um, you know, we didn't get into making bid, no bid decisions, but extracting that key information during the reading section, step one of six that we're doing in this video. If you saw, hey, I'm not doing anything that requires past performance, then um, you should have checked out. Like you shouldn't even be, you know, trying to do this because this is a requirement. But just because you don't have a government contract, it should be very clear here that that's okay. You know, they're saying business name. You know, what is business work that you've done or, you know, worst case scenario work that you have done kind of yourself since you are the small business owner, personal past performance that you're bringing to the business. You know, I personally worked, you know, I was a contractor or I worked for blank and then you would kind of, you know, do a, a reference and the business name for that and then talk about the work you did there to answer these questions. So, like I said, if you checked out seven minutes ago because that was a problem, this is how you get over that problem. And if you still don't have anything, because this is like a brand new business, then you can't go after contracts that require past performance. Like you just can't do it. Good news is not every contract requires past performance. Find another one that's going to require pricing and a resume and a staffing approach or something like that, because it's something that's underneath, you know, the simplified acquisition threshold, maybe under the $250,000 uh, limit where things get to be a little bit more dicey, not dicey, just a little bit more uh, requirements and paperwork is required. It's more thorough. And that's, you know, why we're seeing that with, with this probably. So um, just a little bit of a, a gauge for this, but you know, Hopefully you're still with me here. And um, this is how we're filling out this, this document. We're answering these questions down below here. So we could go ahead and download this document, pretend it's done and save it off so that we could you know, insert it once we're ready to insert it into our proposal. Okay, so now I really went through all that to show you how to respond to this next part. Experience of prime and subcontractors relevant to the solicitation requirements. 
okay, well, you know, like I said, I don't really love the way contracting is doing this. The difference between past performance and experience is being blurred. There is a definite difference between the two, but they're kind of making it confusing and redundant because they're kind of making it part of each of these different questions that they're asking. So the way I want you to address this is I want you to refer to that form. Again, that's why I kind of showed it to you. So what you're going to do is you're going to refer to any of these that you put down here. So again, we're going to use this one, for example, janitorial summer season, number 123. And what you're going to do is you're going to write to these here, janitorial summer season, number one, two, and three. And you're going to talk about experience of prime and subcontractor, you know, if there was even a subcontractor, you know, that may not be relevant to you at all. Um, but what you're going to do here is you're going to talk about how well you did. We received excellent feedback upon the completion of this job. We finished the job on time and under budget. We were in regular communication with the pro We were in regular communication with the director to assure all deliverables were being met satisfactory with every effort to exceed expectations and go above and beyond during the summer season at the LA parks. You know, like you're, 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 you're writing a little bit to this and then, you know, I would do that for each of the past performance that you're referencing here, okay? So, you know, you would want to fill this out um, a bit for and, and reference them the way that you reference them in the form. That's really what I'm trying to convey to you here. And this is gonna be our form that we already completed. So that's complete. So we've got all this stuff complete because we just got a little bit of a documentation management that we're gonna have to deal with. Capability statement's gonna go there, yep. So then really, you know, we got the past performance, we got the technical, and then you just need the price. So where did it go here? Yeah. So you can either attach it separately or, you know, you can add it, you know, PDF it and then add it as a document. Or, you know, you could always, again, this is another one of GovCon Gold Rush students uh, templates, you know, you could you could recreate the table if you wanted to do that um, and line up those those pricing claims that we've seen in the Excel worksheet, you know, as you can see, you know, I kind of format this, we see this all the time. So you can see the CLINS 001, 1001, whatever you have to change and update this stuff to match what's going on here, but it would it would be doable. And it's something that I kind of see done like 50% of the time. So it's definitely like, like a go-to thing to do if you want, you know, I'm not going to do that today, just showing you that we could an example of, you know, what a table look like that you could bring into Word, because we're going to attach, we're going to attach the document. So as far as I'm concerned, that is completed uh, as well, because we will have completed our pricing sheet here in the previous step, when we were looking at our pricing, you know, that's when you do your pricing, if you know, if at all possible, it's kind of hard to finish your response if your pricing isn't done yet. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is that documentation management stuff, I'm gonna PDF some documents, I'm gonna use small PDF, and then I'm gonna kind of bring you back and, and show you uh, what the finished product looks like with everything put together that we just went through in one document. Okay, so thanks to the help of small PDF, I was able to get all the documents uh, together into one package here that looks you know pretty nice. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you what our final product is, because again, um, where are we at? We're rounding out the response um, part portion of this and the government forms. After this, we're gonna be moving on to the review and submission, which I'm gonna go through those actually pretty quickly um, just for the interest of time. And there's, you know, most of the work at this point is now finished, but I wanna be thorough with you to show you the whole process. You should never finish, finish something, finalize it before reviewing it first. But let's go ahead and finish looking at what we have as a finished product here. And then we can uh, finish up those other sections. So, um, is our solicitation uh, response. 
everything's been updated. You've already seen this. This is now a PDF document though, so that has been updated. You know, you're gonna wanna put a final signature on this. Um, updated the table of contents here because we did add in some pages. So I kind of had to, you know, count ahead of time um, before merging all the documents. So the first thing we're gonna see is technical package. Please see the uh, capability statement below. And then now you can see very nicely, we have a sample capability statement. Um, if you don't recognize it, this is a statement from my website, govkidmethod.com. Um, you can get capability statements there or you know, insert your own. And then next, very nicely, we go into our work staffing plan that we uh, plugged and chugged in here. So quickly scroll through that. Next, we have our past performance. Um, and here I just wrote some examples, um, just copy and paste for three different jobs, you know, really just talking about, you know, we really went over this and I just copy and pasted it for three other jobs to give you an example of just a little bit that you could write. But then next, please see our past performance list. So this is our list that we filled out. Um, very nicely slid into here and your answers to these questions that you would want to complete, of course. And then lastly, um, please see our Pikes Peak pricing schedule. I could take out that attached and, and change, change it to below um, because now uh, I put in some kind of some fake numbers here, guys. These numbers are not based on anything in reality, so you do not get um, caught up on those. Probably the only reality to these numbers is uh, in future years, you do want to have a, a bit of an incremental price increase. So I did reflect that, even though the numbers themselves are totally bogus. Um, so, you know, that's really the only truth to these numbers. But as you can see, we've got a nice PDF slide in here of that pricing schedule from the Excel workbook that they gave us. So this is this is all one document. So when we go to submit, it's gonna be a lot easier for us to submit off one document. So now let's go ahead and finish, uh, let's finish this video up, let's finish this, this whole process up and look at what we got left. So um, review, compare to requirements, you know, um, you wanna make sure you're doing this, but really what you wanna do is make sure what we have here in our response, you know, and this is just the word version still, so let me come back. Make sure what we have here is now, let me go ahead and just get this lined up properly, is aligned with what they're asking for. You know, and using this method, doing the skeleton outline at the beginning, it almost makes us a foolproof method because now when you go through this again to review, do your red team, you know, whatever, if you're gonna have somebody else look at this, okay, you know, is their legal name, is their company name, you know, here on this? You know, is there, you know, telephone, point of contact information, you know, all that type of stuff. Um, well, you know, you, you really didn't probably miss anything. Technical package, capability statement, you know, like here's a table of contents, boom. We could probably change it from technical approach to technical package to use their word, but you know, technical package, capability statement, you know, it's all here, business approach, staffing plan, boom, right there. Experience, well, you know, that falls right in line so not only did we include everything but we put it in the same order that you know the government was was referring to you know here's our list here's the list and then you know the pricing pricing boom okay so it may not be the prettiest it may not be i don't know the most efficient um, but this is just, you know, a way that is, you know, thorough enough for you guys to get started to kind of show you the whole process here of what you need to do to submit something and to show you it's it's not as hard maybe as you are making it out to be or you're afraid it's going to be or because you're not technically inclined that you can't do it. Okay, if you can follow these steps, these six steps that I'm breaking out, you can do this and you can win a contract, okay? Okay guys, so before we get to this last step, which is submitting the email, I actually wanna show you something. This is the email I was referring to that I told you I'd get to um, later, but you know, I sent this June 4th a few days ago because I was planning to work on this because this pricing schedule was not included. It, you know, it's a hell of a thing to leave out. Um, so that's why you know, we didn't get into it, but uh, they did this amendment one. The purpose of the, this amendment is to provide the Pikes Peak schedule that was inadvertently left out of the initial posting. That was me guys, like I caused this this change and I did that for this YouTube video. You know, it's it's actually kind of crazy. This is the email that I wrote Kelly, you know, um, Pikes Peak Janitorial, so you can see that I'm not lying. It says, enter the unit price in the, in the schedule. We have reviewed all six attachments. Uh, no such pricing schedule has been included. Can you please provide one or let me know 
how do you want your pricing? Okay. I sent that email to Kelly to contracting and she was, you know, she happily uh, responded. Hello, Derek. The schedule was inadvertently left out. I will be issuing an amendment providing the schedule. And so, you know, as of, you know, this morning, Monday, she has uh, updated that thankfully. But imagine if I, if I didn't do that and this kind of upset me because it's like, Hey, I know everybody makes mistakes and contracting is not perfect, but um, you know, that's such a thing to miss out or to leave out. And uh, what I referred to earlier in this video is for contractors that don't have the confidence or they don't know any better, they may be looking at this going cross-eyed saying, how do you, how am I supposed to do my pricing? You know, they're new, they're, they're, they're vulnerable. They're not very confident, you know? And so they're just going to like, they're going to put together some sort of pricing that they think is right. They're going to submit it and they're going to lose because it's not going to be correct. And maybe she would have caught this. Maybe she didn't. It's crazy that I, you know, I caught this uh, just for doing a YouTube video. Cause obviously I'm not responding to this and bidding on it, but um, you know, this is, these are real life situations guys. And this was a great example I thought to show you of what you need to do. You need to dig your heels in. You need to get confidence and practice this process, these six steps over time so that when you're seeing something that doesn't look right, you can email contracting and they do respond. They do help you. If there's something missing, you know, they will, you know, they will update it. And then secondly, before we, you know, we, we move out of this is just that, you know, I was confused about this whole business approach thing. I'm like, what's this business approach? And oh, by the way, you're asking for this whole um, staffing work plan, right? But it's not asked, it's not included in the proposal um, requirement that we read through. So she also said the business approach is the staffing or work plan. You know, that's where it should be provided. So my response is kind of like, well, why didn't you just say that? Instead of asking for a business approach in the proposal requirements, you know, if you guys don't remember where I'm talking about, I think I still have it open, yeah, you know, Instead of asking for a business approach here and then like over here saying you need a uh, wor working staffing plan, just call it a working staffing plan and delete this word out and put working staffing plan. You know, this stuff is hard enough for us to kind of wrap our heads around where, you know, many of us are, are starting in the dark and we don't know anything about the requirement. So you have to take contracting's word for it. Well, it's really hard to do that when contracting themselves are getting things wrong and it doesn't make sense which makes it even more important for us contractors to really communicate with contracting as often as possible. If you have a million questions, send them because they may have missed something and you may miss out on a good opportunity if you just take contracting's word for it and say, well, I can't do this because it's too confusing. Well, maybe it is confusing and contracting needs to clear it up or maybe it's confusing because they missed uh, attaching the pricing schedule and you know that's why you don't understand it. Because the, the pricing was really, really easy once we saw the, the workbook that, that Kelly gave us. But I was kind of scratching my head even like, did I miss something? Like, is, am I like not, you know, reading through the, between the lines here or like what? Um, it's like, no, they just wasn't there. So sometimes it is that simple. So that's enough of that tangent, enough of that soapbox. I want to finish this up. So last thing, uh, submission and email to contracting. So for this, you know, I have pretty much templates for as many things as possible, you know, in GovCon Go Rush. But, you know, this is an example of one of our templates for uh, just submitting a bid. You know, it's, it's really nothing too fancy, so I don't have a problem showing it to you. It's just going to kind of be a, a, uh, a typical type email response. So what we can do is compose this and um, you can just pull this up. And, you know, we're going to say... Hello, Kelly. ABC offers a response to solicitation, you know, whatever our solicitation number is. Too many tabs open, guys. Too many tabs. Um, to provide janitorial services to Pikes Peak, Colorado for the VA. National Cemetery. Our response includes our technical package, past performance information, and pricing schedule. We'll say and completed. Completed pricing schedule. Please let me know if you have any questions. We look forward to an opportunity to provide subject services to the VA. You know, and all we're going to do is, you know, I'll go ahead and attach the document. 
Okay, so you can see our response document is attached. This is our you know, document where we put everything uh, together, this document. I'm gonna go ahead and you know pull Kelly's email. You know, recipient, and then we can, you know, for our response, we can say uh, solicitation such and such. say, you know, Pike's peak janitorial. Okay, so like, that's really what you need to do. You know, this is it, I'm gonna quickly <laughs> delete this out because I don't wanna accidentally send it to Kelly. Uh, she's gonna be like, what is this? This isn't even real, this isn't even an accurate uh, completed response, this is all just sample stuff. Um, so I'll go ahead and you know, trash this. And um, that's, that's really it, guys. We have completed our six steps, you know, including our review and what a easy submission looks like. As you can see, so much is uh, based off of the reading and the outlining. The rest of the stuff kind of fills itself in. It just takes a little bit of work, and that's just how these go. Some of them are easier, some of them are harder. Uh, I'd say this is, you know, kind of like easy to easy medium, you know, because it did require all three sections and a few forms, uh, but it really wasn't too bad. This video was a lot of work, so you better hit that like button if you've made it this far, because this was a lot of work. Um, I was happy to do it for you guys to kind of demonstrate this whole process, and this should also earn a subscription. So, you know, click that subscribe button. If you're watching my videos and you're not subscribed yet, click the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my new videos that come out. And, you know, I did reference GovCon Gold Rush. That's where we have all these templates. This is what we're doing inside the program. This is one of the ways that I can showcase to you instead of you know, kind of like telling you about the program. Well, this is the type of stuff that you get in the program and you get a whole lot more. This is just a part of it. But if you have any interest in joining GovCon Gold Rush, it's application only. And I will add the link in the description of this video if you're interested in um, figuring out next steps on how to join GovCon Gold Rush. If you want to get serious, if you want to start bidding, that really is the, the ultimate best resource for you. But I also do. Um, kind of one-on-one -on -one coaching where I can help you go through bits together. We can kind of work on a response together. I can review your response, things like that. So I also do that in my one-on-one -on -one coaching through Zoom on my website, govkidmethod.com. Make sure you check out this video or this video. I know you're going to love it in the meantime. And until next time, guys, keep grinding. I hope this response video was helpful. It was a lot of work. Um, we'll see what we do next. But again, keep grinding and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.